All good, all good, all good. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Pit Stop Podcast. It's the start of 2023, and we're bringing it in with another guest. Yep, episode five, and as promised, we have our first guest of the season. Ladies and gentlemen, Ollie Behrman. Yes, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> It's yeah, it's on, nice bro. to uh, nice to finally be on here. It's been a long time coming, I think. Um, Mate, this has been a long time coming. I think we've been planning it for three months almost. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when I met you guys in Barcelona, was it? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We was. were talking about that last night. I feel like we should just jump straight into that straight away because, firstly, you were literally one of the first drivers I'd met in the Formula really? One paddock world, anything to do with... Formula One or Formula Two or anything. Was it your first race, Barcelona? Second, well, second race. Yeah, because we went into the paddock in Imola when we were there, but we were only there for like an hour. Right. And then in Barcelona, we were taken in like for two hours. And then we got introduced to you. And I remember straight away, someone from Ferrari was like, this is our prodigy. Like, he's going to be the next best thing. <laughs> and to be honest, we, we didn't know anything about you, really. Like, you were we, gassed up a lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's they were news. all like, he's amazing. And then we they tell us we're filming them videos with you. Yeah. That was chaos mate okay. we, we need to apologize yeah like, I'm sorry straight away. Vince. <laughs> i just remember you guys turned up and like i watched a few of your videos they popped up on my tiktok and i was like wow these guys have you know gone quite big quite fast mm -hmm. and then um yeah you guys really didn't know anything at that <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even know how to pronounce your surname properly yeah I everyone was... to be fair everyone does that it's a bit annoying but um <laughs> you got there in the end so we were so. saying last night weren't we like the amount of times you came up to me that day and yeah. you're like so is it bearman or bearman Mate, so I Jason was so Bateman. nervous. I was honestly so nervous. You got to imagine that's the first time we've like left the house and we've got a camera on us <laughs> in years. In <laughs> first time you've ever left. Like, <laughs> we haven't left the house in ages, by the way, have we? No, no, we haven't. But yeah, no. Barcelona was a good trip. That's where we met you. We did that. Them videos never went live. Really? Do no. you think they ever will? Maybe we Thank should. God. Maybe we should show a sneak peek. <laughs> should we show, should has we? anyone? Have you got them? Yep, on my phone. We yeah. should show people how bad they were. For... Let's insert one like right here. <laughs> yeah. Like... How are you finding in Barcelona? Yeah, it's been uh, been a really hot weekend so far. Were they like, you know, walk this way or walk that way? If you, it oh, was like no, go no, left. We, if I know what you mean, the ones where they're like go they, left. They did that. With, that was Ferrari. Oh, that was Ferrari. But okay. our interview on it, it was so bad because also I, I kept fucking up all the names. I was talking about Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz, but I I said Charles and Leclerc <laughs> rather than Carlos and Charles. Oh no! And like because I was just such an, it was put on us last minute. We didn't we didn't know it was happening until we got there. And uh, we were just a bit nervous, I think, weren't we? Yeah. But either way, that was a long time ago now. Yeah, here we are. Come a long way since then. We have. You're in our flat. Thanks very much for coming here today, mate. Thanks yeah. for driving. Yeah. You've I'm got driving a busy now, day, no? So, uh, yeah, yeah, let's go straight to that. You're 17 and you've passed your driving test. Yeah, thank God for that. It was, uh, it was a... Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's a big move. I can drive an F2 car and I can only finally drive on the road after... Uh, <laughs> How's that? How, how is that? Like, did your, did your driving instructor know that you were... Well, racing, I only right? had like three lessons because uh, obviously I just drove around with like my mum because mm -hmm. it's not that hard, is it? I mean, no. for, some, for a racing driver, it's not that difficult. Um, and then I had like three lessons just so I could learn like the parking and stuff like that. That's the, the stuff that, that yeah. could be difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I told him everything. Um, <laughs> I, I had like one lesson the, the day before my test. Um, it was like my third ever lesson, so I was a bit underprepared. But actually, I even told the examiner that I um, that I was a racing driver. Let's go. She, she asked me. She was like, "You know what? What are you missing to uh, to be here? Because normally I'd be missing school, right? It yeah. was like Monday midday." You're like, "Oh, mum's like, oh, up." <laughs> I'll have to tell her now everything. So yeah, I think she spent more time like listening to me than actually focusing on my driving, which was probably good. That's all right though. Uh, and when you went for your first passed. lesson with her, and you were like. Did you tell her you're not going to need many because you are a racing driver? Is that yeah, what you told well, her? funnily enough, I, I had like, my first instructor was my dad's instructor. Um, oh, wow. Because oh, wow, yeah. I got like a driving lesson for my birthday. Best present ever, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, like they don't really let you have lessons unless you've passed your theory. And obviously I hadn't on my birthday. So my dad like knew his old instructor. 
So I had this old guy, like, uh, <laughs> who my dad knew, um, and he taught me wrongly how to drive. But, uh, <laughs> wrongly? Yeah. He's, the, you know, past his prime, that guy. But, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, he still thinks you've got to wind the car yeah. up at the front. <laughs> <laughs> got to choke it to turn it yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I, I did the same. I, I learned through my dad, pretty much. But, the, like, I, sometimes I had my stepmom in the car as well, and the amount of time she would just be cursing my dad. Cause she, my dad would just be like, yeah, just, just quickly drive faster to get through the light before it goes red. I'm like, dad, you can't be telling me that stuff. My dad was telling me to go in the wrong lane um, in the roundabout. <laughs> like you didn't know which lane to use. So, oh. and I was like, dad, no, it's not like that. I've learned already from Dad's my Dad's the joking. best, didn't they? Dad's the best. <laughs> when did you pass your when, driving test? When? A couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, May. So coming up to literally only two years ago. So and I'm 20, really? 27, yeah. Oh, so wow. you passed it when you were like 24, 25? Yeah. Let's yeah. say 25. Did yeah. you just never want to drive or you were not good enough? Um, no, I couldn't, I just couldn't afford it. Like at right. the time, because I've always done music like my whole life and my band lives so far away. So I, they lived in London and we lived down South. So I just used to get the train to London. It yeah. was much easier. So much quicker as well normally. Yeah. What are you driving though? A one series. Oh, it's a nice car. It's a nice car. What does a one series mean? Is that a BMW? BMW? <laughs> okay. Not yeah. a Ferrari, <laughs> unfortunately. Well, I get confused between Yet. them and Audi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, it's a manual, um, front wheel drive, unfortunately, but uh, oh, that's a no, shame. it's nice. It's, I can't uh, drive a manual. Really? No, you yeah, only passed auto. I did auto tests. But oh, I learned God. to drive in London. And like, yeah. when I was doing it, I was working with the company I did them with, and they gave me, like, I had this deal on these auto lessons. So I was like, yeah, I'll go auto. Can't yeah. complain with that. The thing is, you just stop start all in London as well, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you? So it's. Uh... <sighs> Driving a manual in London is the worst. Leg day. <laughs> oh, mate, sorry about One day I had cramp in my leg, and my foot kept, kept like, twitching on the clutch. Crashing into the car in front. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> Whereabouts are you from? Where did you drive from today? Uh, from Essex. Oh, okay, so I, I yeah, live in yeah. Chelmsford. Um, it's like yeah, thirty minutes from Central by train. It was like yeah. an, it was like fifty minutes um, from here, so not too bad. And where are you off to tonight? To to Venice. I'm flying to Prema. I uh, got some sim tomorrow, and then uh, after that, straight to Maranello for some more sim. So uh, yeah, keeping busy out. What in does a, what does a Venice sim look like? Well, Prema sim. It's uh, it's quite cool. I mean, it's the only way we can prepare for the for the season. Uh, obviously, there's no extra testing yeah. before before Bahrain, so mm. it's the only way we can really be ready uh, as much as we can for the for the season. Um, I was there last week for a seat fit, which was quite cool. No, nice, cool. To, nice How to do jump you do back a seat in the car. Fit? Is it, is it, is it I know, I know. Go on. I could tell you. Yeah, right. Tell rather, him, rather, tell rather him if he's wrong, because I bet he's wrong. <laughs> well, I, I think it's different sometimes, but I saw they, they have these like, it's like a bean bag. Isn't it? It's like a beanbag. It depends. So we don't do it like that, but go on, carry oh, okay. on. Well, you, <laughs> just, you, just, you sit in the beanbag and it's like slowly sets. So I think you sit in it and then it takes the shape of your body and you got uh -huh. to sit there for a bit until it dries. Is that right? Yeah, it's something like that. So a lot of teams do it like that, but also some teams do it like we do, which is um, it's like expanding foam. Hmm. Um, it's really like rudimentary. Um, you put it in a bag, sit in the bag and it gets really hot and expands. It's the same thing, hmm. uh, just a different... Um, method but it's like it gets so hot in there because when it uh reacts it gets hot yeah so you're sitting in there for like half an hour absolutely sweating in your suit with your helmet on with your hands device oh, sweating in the factory but it's really nice because uh sends you to sleep normally does it must <laughs> and, be so um, nice to have a, a it is quite comfortable seat. actually as well mm. Like it's important that. because you can't move at all if you move during the race like you get loads of back pain leg pain so it's quite important that the seat's good like it took me two attempts the first one wasn't happy with mm. so uh like once it sets you're yeah, you're stuck yeah. so if you're like a bit off off center or mm. a bit too high because the height's really important as well then you're in trouble so hey, we have to do I, it i can't twice. believe how tall you are yeah i was gonna say yeah. i fully can't believe how tall you are but it's very interesting because he, he wasn't that tall when we first you weren't met him. that tall when we met you, you don't think everyone always tells me i get taller like You've every time really i see them but grown. Like that's, really that's not a good sign. I got to say, mate, you're uh, you're going to be a bit of a machine in that paddock. I think <laughs> in a couple of years, mate, you're sweet, you six one, six two. Yeah, very handsome lad. Cheers, mate. You're a racing driver. I think things are going to be <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> 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 just oh being honest. God. Yeah. Yeah. The season's coming back round, and it looks really exciting. You've just announced you're in F two next year with Prema, which, which is, is mate, amazing. Which is huge, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Round of for, that. for that one. <laughs> that's amazing mate I mean really this is like the final leg now the final step before you boot the door open into F1 yeah yeah exactly it's really nice to sign with Premier as well obviously I was in F3 with them best um, team exactly they are so, great mm. really good team on, on all sides media first of all they do great videos um, good exposure for the fans but also on the team side they're an amazing team so professional um, yeah 
So yeah, really looking forward to, to get going. It's been a long time waiting. Um, this winter break feels like the longest one yet. So yeah. yeah. Who's your teammate with Premier and FT? It's uh, Vesti, yeah, Frederick I Vesti. So, yeah, I I thought, so yeah. he's his second year, so that's perfect really. Um, someone to learn off of. It's exactly what I had in F3. Uh, uh, I was a rookie and my teammates were experienced. So you know exactly where you need to be. Um, makes your life a bit easier mm. than working with two rookies. So. Yeah, I good. really want to get into your F4s, F3s, everything, because I was going through it and I've got so much I want to say. But before that, I want to take it way back, like way before that. Let's go to the first time you ever drove a car or any form of racing. When did you start? Yeah, so I've always been like a petrol head. Like uh, I remember I had loads of model cars when I was a kid. I used to like drive them around um, with my hands. And then... Yeah, my dad raced, my granddad raced, it's kind of in the family. Uh, oh, wow. I remember going and watching them, not at a high level, but, uh, you know, enough to to uh, to go and watch and kind of fall in love, um, smell the fuel and the rubber yeah. and you, you get to love it. Um, first time I drove was at Buckmore Park. I was really? like, you, you've there. been there? We're going there. We're going. We're there. We're going. Really? Yeah. You're going karting? It, we can't really say why. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tell you off, tell you off there, but yeah, good one. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's a mega track. It's the first place I went to. So um, we went around this, like, not the main track. There's this tiny little oval. I think it's been, like, paved over now. But um, I was, like, six or five even. I don't even remember, but I was so young um, doing, like, literally just learning how to stop and start. And there was this kid behind me who kept crashing into the back of me because <laughs> he didn't know how to stop yet. That would have been you. But, yeah, uh, that been <laughs> yeah, that was you. So a um, bit of whiplash. Um, <laughs> then I think, you know, I don't actually remember. This is all kind of stories I've been told, but I'm pretty sure I got a cart that, that, um, that Christmas. And then we used to go to Rye House in Buckmore yeah. um, just testing. Uh, I remember I had a massive shunt, like... Uh, because they used to put the slow carts on with the faster ones. Obviously, I was a kid. I was in the slow one, and this guy took me out. Um, <laughs> so that was almost the end of my career. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that it wasn't that bad. <laughs> but um, yeah, I remember that was a bit. That was my scariest moment so far. Um, but you did amazing in the carton series. Like, yeah. The thing is, it's easy for us to get guests on here and go through their career and talk about things. But I looked at yours, I'll be honest, last night. Because like, we've been that busy and I wanted I haven't, to... I haven't, I haven't looked. Oh, so, so I'm learning as well yeah, with I, everyone else. Well, I wanted it to be fresh. So I looked last night. I He's went prepared. Through, I went through <laughs> yeah. your parting years, mate. It's literally... You, the only time you've ever come third was, was in F3, right? Yeah. Every, other than that, it's first and second. That's all you've come. Yeah. And then your parting years, it's pretty much win, 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 win. And even in, you know, then you go into F4. And we'll talk about that. Yeah. But you've had a lot of wins. Yeah, I had a lot of success in karting, especially kind of end of my karting career in like junior karting. I went to Europe and, and did well there. Um, I won the, the world championship in karting, which was pretty cool. Um, world championship, that's, that's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. It's that's not quite... just like European, that's... Yeah. No, mate, that's huge. That's the whole world. And I was going to say, <laughs> you, have we, when you were doing that in the world karting championship, were you racing against like people that are currently in this F1, F2 world. But then I guess you're also a little bit younger. Yeah, that's the thing. Like this year in F2, I'm the youngest. Um, so You're the youngest on the F2 group? Yeah, there's wow. a couple of them that I've raced in karting, um, but they did a different kind of type of karting to me, a bit more high level um, with a bit higher budgets. That's why we didn't really go that route of, of karting. Um, but yeah, I, I've raced a few of them, uh, but not in F2, I'm the youngest. And they're all a couple, you know, steps ahead of me at, at that stage in karting that's, we, that's really cool though to know that you're the youngest i think i think yeah. it's better yeah that's quite it's quite nice to know were um, you also the youngest in f3 i think i was like three days older than the youngest yeah you were like one of right yeah because that was also um marty in campus um, okay yeah, yeah, he yeah. was the youngest but i think that was not even a month in it so there was three of us me crawford and uh and him we were like the youngest three in there in the championship so it's we were quite watching cool. some of your f3 last year because we started getting into like watching the f2 and then obviously the f3 was on tv as well yeah. it is amazing racing but also the f3 season last year the top three for you finished with what like 10 points between you or less than that yeah i was seven points off the off the championship um at the end which <laughs> oh, man. i mean if you consider at the halfway point in the championship i think i was like 60 points behind or something it was it was quite a shaky start to the championship um but yeah, my second half was really good and I, you know, bought a lot of points home. 
unfortunately seven too little but uh yeah no it was a really good season um especially the second half it who was good are you fun. who are you driving with in f3 with prema with prema as well yeah, yeah. has it been prema since f4 well i was i never drove with prema in f4 so Prem, this last year was my first year with uh with prema actually we did a test with them if we would race with them in f4 um but we didn't in the end um but yeah this was my first year with prema and hopefully the first of, of many. many. It's been uh, it's been really fun so far. I was trying to understand your F4 journey because online it's you did two series in one year, right? Yeah. Didn't you win English F4 and German? It was German and Italian. German and Italian, uh, that's right. Yeah, two in a row. But actually before that, I also did F4. So it was my second year in F4. Um, but funny story. So I wasn't going to do F4 in 2020, um, which was my first year. And because of COVID, everything was shifted back, which yeah. meant the the first round was after my birthday which meant i was old enough to do the championship so we decided at the last minute to uh to go in and do it wow without enough preparation looking back but that's you crazy no 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 unfortunately not that was my first year oh yeah um, yeah okay okay i've got you so i did two in f uh, in f4 um yeah the first one i came seventh i think uh wasn't the best year yeah. but we weren't ready for it at all um my first race i was starting on the front row and I stored it. <laughs> no. So uh, a bit of an embarrassing moment. It's funny to me, though, how you say we come seventh and we weren't really prepared for it. I bet there's people on the grid that would die to come, yeah. to come seventh. Yeah. You know? yeah, no. I mean, we were good in... I like. I showed good potential. Uh, I just made too many mistakes. But uh, mm. it was kind of... That's kind of expected, I think. Um, I'd done like six days of testing before I did my first race, which is really not enough. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it was kind of expected, but the second year we, you know, we put everything together and and won both championships, which was really good and propelled me straight to F3. So that was cool, and and got me the, you know, after that season, I was uh, I joined the FDA. So let's go. That's, yeah, that's it. It kind of came off the back of that. So yeah, it was a really good year for me. Greatest team in F1 history, Ferrari. You're yeah. like you're literally with the best team. Yeah, it's really cool. Like the history that they've got. Um, mm. When you walk in there and you see all the championship winning cars, um, they've got. I'm, have you you've been there, right? Marino filming with, with Robert. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we filmed in the in the factory around the cars. In the in is. the museum. In yeah, the museum. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. They've got all the helmets of the championships as well. It's, it's so unreal. Cool. The whole Ferrari team were amazing. They helped us set it all up, barriered us off, like, yeah. a whole bit to film. Oh, them. they went out. They turned the music down. Yeah, we're like, turned the music off. Literally, it was like a, an open day where there was people walking around and they literally it cordoned off you up. our area. Yeah, That's properly. so cool. Yeah, I, think really it's, I think it's mad, yeah, just for a second, how like you're talking about like your birthday and getting into F4. And to me, when I think of karting, I do think of it, even though you, you can do it professionally, I still think of it as like... Rental karting. Just like, yeah, like you can have a, like a fun, mm. like for someone's birthday, birthday. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the fact that you're like 17, you're 17 still, yeah. right? And you can drive a car that goes like 150 mile an hour or however quick it goes, but you can't drink, <laughs> technically. Yeah, I mean, it's mad that when you do that and then you go and get your driving license. Yeah. And they give you're... us a lot of responsibility with, uh, at a young age. But yeah, it's cool. Like um, when I was karting, you know, my friends from school when I was like 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, they don't they think of like the rental car, you know, with the metal bumpers around it. And yeah. they don't realize that actually, you know, we're going every weekend. It's really kind of professional, even at, at that level. Um, and, you know, the budgets are really high and everything. And it's, uh, it's really proper, proper karting. It's, it's a big difference, but it's so cool. It's really fun. So how has that been like with your mates or like with school or anyone who might not fully understand at the time when you were putting in all those hours to, to race? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I finished my GCSEs and I left school. Um, so that was almost two years ago now. Um, because yeah, you just need to focus fully on one thing. You know, yeah. I could, I had the option to do A levels and kind of put fifty-fifty on racing and and school, but I decided to focus fully on on racing because I've only got one chance. Um, yeah. You can't you can't mess it up. So um, yeah, I, I left school quite early. Um, so. Hopefully it goes well because I got no backup plan otherwise. Um, but yeah, also, you know, I missed a lot of kind of fun things with my friends. Um, mm. You know, I was away karting almost 45 weekends, I think, at some points in my karting career. Wow. It's uh, it's so it's so aggressive. <laughs> like you're doing it so much. Um, you're 17 and you're away karting around Europe. I was 17 at house parties, jumping downstairs, absolutely <laughs> slashed. I was playing RuneScape, drinking... <laughs> drinking squash <laughs> the difference is unbelievable also i want to say do you not have to wear the ferrari top i don't know i didn't ask 
I don't know either. We got one. But I was just thinking like, oh my God, what if they come back and say, where's a Ferrari top? <laughs> it, would be, it would be Prem. Would it still be Prema? I don't know. We I got it would have to be Ferrari if I, if I wore one, but... It wouldn't be a Ferrari top, it'd be a Ferrari Driver Academy top. Right. So. If they come back, we'll edit a Ferrari. Way, I think they would be, we'll it would be Prema, wouldn't it? And <laughs> unfortunately, Prema haven't sent us any clothes yet. So no, they haven't. Hopefully, they'll send us some, and then next time <laughs> we'll be a little bit more prepared. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, if I was Ferrari Driver Academy, I would literally wear that T-shirt everywhere. Oh, I'd wear like, it to bed. Everywhere. Literally. Does it have your name on the back or a number? No, no, no. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> pretty ledge. That is pretty cool. <laughs> but no, yeah, Where F2. The shops. F2 is really exciting. How yeah. are you feeling ahead of that? Like that when we spoke and you said we want to cut through the pod once it's announced, it's now been announced. Yeah. How are you feeling? Like we're t- a couple of months out, media's about to start, testing's around the corner. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. Time's really flown. I remember kind of a month ago saying, Oh my god, it's so far away, but now it's uh now it's real close. So yeah, I'm preparing as best as I can, uh, with Prema and also physically, uh in the gym. And yeah, it's it's going to be really fun. Uh, obviously, a big challenge. It's a big step up, but uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's uh, pit stops is cool, an extra, an extra kind of part of the of the racing. Two different tire compounds, like F1. You um, don't pit in F3? No, 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 no pit stops in F3. Really? Did you so, know that? Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, in F2 we have we have pit stops, which is which is oh. really nice. So um, I was going to say, how different is it? How different is F2 to F3? I didn't think the cars were much different. Yeah, so, I mean, it's no, got an extra either. kind of 250 horsepower. Um, wow, so my Golf has 105 exactly. horsepower. Exactly. It's so like, like twice my Golf extra. Wow. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's massively faster, mm. uh, especially in the straights. In the corners, it's fairly similar because the F2 car is quite heavy. Um, so, yeah, it feels, you know, a bit slower in the corners. Mm. But in the straights, it's, it's massively fast. Um, and we have two tire compounds. So we have like a, a medium tire and a soft tire or a hard mm-hmm. tire and a soft tire. So like when you put the soft tire on, you, sp- you found like one second, um, which is really cool. Like you suddenly get loads of extra grip, which we don't have in F3. In F3, it's just one tire compound for the whole race weekend so it's nice that we that we switch it up in f2 yeah it's quite a step what if it, what if it rains mid mid race oh we still have wets oh. we still have that oh. but uh <laughs> still out the leave slicks. them out <laughs> leave them out in the slicks <laughs> yeah oh he's never done that. a podcast before and he's coming here and we're not even talking about wet tires we we, we, we did but more uh we did what was the other cart track you said but buckmore buckmore no we did shen shennington yeah, did we? No, we went to Shennington. Oh, oh Rye really? House. You said Rye House. Oh, you've been to Rye House. With was it the, Rye House? Uh, you did some filming with a karting driver, right? Yeah, Joshua Begembe. Oh, Begembe. We went to Rye House. Okay, so it was Shennington that we drove around. No, we went to watch him at Shennington. And we oh, drove. Yeah, yeah. And we, uh, drove. we did it in the same place, yeah. <laughs> That's Shennington. Bad. That's where um, we drove past. Sorry, Joshua. We were in the rain on slicks. Really? Nightmare. Karting in the rain is, is awful. And then when you put slicks on, it's even worse. So what were you driving at, at Shennington, you said? Yeah, we were doing a, a kart day with Joshua, which was great. His kart was so quick. Really? And we, we had some quick karts as well. But he had wet tyres, so oh, he was fine. Unfair advantage there. Yeah. We yeah. couldn't even make it round a corner. I, actually, I actually fancied myself if it was dry. But you yeah. did lose by four and a half seconds yeah. to the quicker driver. No way. Yeah, That's I'm, I'm just I'm just much quicker than Fab in any form of driving. Yeah, not just driving, like ev- everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, wanted to talk to you about media because um, I saw you started making YouTube vids. I've yeah. seen two vlogs. Uh, I watched them. Uh, they're really? great. Did you like them, mate? I, they're I great. I haven't seen them. They That's cracked cool. me right up. I wanted more. Yeah, we got another one coming soon. Um, I'm filming with uh yeah with a with a media person and we did some stuff in Italy the, in the past couple of weeks. Nice. Uh, we did some gym stuff and some cooking a, a cooking class. I saw that on your on your Instagram. Yeah, on my Instagram, yeah. 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 So we learned to cook. Uh, I learned to cook tortellini, which is really hard. Like uh, the amount of time it takes versus the amount of food you actually get is mm. really depressing. You spend like <laughs> two hours on it and you get like one one portion but uh yeah it was really good and we That's got so a true. video coming soon That's so true yeah the We're stuff gonna... on the dunes was filmed so well it yeah. looks amazing yeah it's cool isn't it it's really nice i'm happy with it because it's good to kind of start the media side and the unprofessional side of 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 me because you know you only see the the racing focus guy you don't see the guy away from the track who's actually a normal person so yeah we're going to do some stuff at every track um you know we're going to bahrain and doing some stuff i don't know what but that's yet to be to be mm. seen and then we'll do some stuff in australia as well um i think everywhere we'll do some filming and you've got we've got episode one of kind of a, a series coming out i think 
before Bahrain. So that's sick. something to look forward to. I hope I hope it's as good as the as the sand dunes one because that was good fun. <laughs> yeah, it cracked me up. It's funny you say you're a normal person, but I'd actually probably say that you've got a bit more about you than I think a lot of racing drivers. Not a lot, but like quite a few can be a bit. It's because they're so focused. They're so dedicated to their sport that maybe they're not as great on camera yeah. as some people, but like you're quite funny yeah. on the videos yeah, you that you've done. Right, so <laughs> I think you'll be a big, um, if you get an F1 and that, like Drive to Survive will lap you up. Yeah. And just any sort of fun media stuff would, would be like really good. Yeah, it's important. Like uh, you need to show that you're not just always, I mean, at the right times you have to be serious, of course, but yeah. away from that, you need to show that you're actually a, a likable person it's good for sponsors as well and stuff like that so mm. i think you're in a great position though because i don't see you doing this kind of stuff like necessarily because of the position you're in like i could imagine you doing this kind of stuff doing them vlogs whether you were a racing driver or not like yeah. that's your personality telling that story and i also think because you're 17 and you're in like this new wave which is great because we'll get to follow your whole career for our, our career doing this yeah you're gonna. I think the whole world of how drivers present themselves online it's and like changing make a lot. content is gonna change so much. And you're almost like at the exact forefront yeah. because you can make vlogs and you can exactly. do. I'm I here. think like it started with like the newest generation of F1 drivers like Lando and yeah. George and Charlie, even you know doing the streaming during lockdown and making YouTube videos. And it's really took on, <clears throat> it's taken off. And the fan base is massive in F1 nowadays, especially with Drive mm. to Survive. So uh, you need to make the most of it and you know get people on your side it's really it's really cool you've got an amazing fan base haven't you yeah it's really cool it's really cool thanks to prema and ferrari i mean i've blown up quite a lot in this uh in this year so um i think i yeah i've come from i mean i started the year with like a thousand followers or something really <laughs> wow. a bit more maybe really? maybe ten thousand or something you've got but... fan clubs now i've <laughs> yeah. seen them all tweeting me Wait, they've all been set because everyone's been guessing you've been coming on oliver yeah. and fan club they've been loving it twitter's been loving it yeah. instagram's been loving it they're all over it <laughs> yeah it's we, really cool <laughs> why don't we have a fan club we do do we we have one page some it's guy me. some <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> you posted that he posted two videos about us that's nice do you remember from the pub oh yeah he edited them as well didn't he really, really tried to re-edit yeah. all of our videos yeah, yeah. Oh, they're, they're, are they are they paying you off or no they're okay <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> no they're not they're not luckily yeah. you should well one. you know who to talk to they'll make fan pages for you no problem yeah once this video goes up hopefully you have a couple a, the only Berman fan pages are going mad they might make us Oh, a they will. Yeah, they will, won't they? Because you've never done a pod before. So this is like first, exclusive. First podcast. We yeah. need an exclusive story out of you then so we can <laughs> plaster it everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Who's like, who's like the weirdest person in the paddock? <laughs> the weirdest. Um, <laughs> or, or like, what's like one of the funnest times you had like with, with another driver that you can um, talk about? Oh, I don't know how much I can... <laughs> 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 what about some premise stories about them guys? Yeah. Some premise stories. I mean... We had a lot of fun in the media week. Um, have you seen any of the videos they made? Uh, from, wait, is this? Because we did it last year as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the ones that are live. Yeah, the yeah, ones yeah, that are I've already seen live. So, I love um, all the premise videos. They did, we did some fun stuff, like I did one with um, Dennis Hauger. Yeah, yeah. Um, where we called our engineers, but we had like uh, AirPods in or something, so we couldn't hear. And I, I think it's like a trend, but um, you know, you can't hear what they're saying, but you have to respond. Oh, so yeah, Dennis yeah, was yeah, telling yeah, me yeah, what yeah. to say to my engineer. By, with hand signals and he ended up hanging up on me um, <laughs> so that, that was a bit awkward I had to, to make up with him again but we did some really fun stuff as well like um, I'm trying to think but we did like a blindfolded wheelbarrow race like they're really crazy <laughs> like the stuff we do there that's safe but, uh, it's really cool because <laughs> blindfolded wheelbarrow race <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. that sounds hilarious we had to do like challenges and stuff like uh Looking back, it was really strange, but but uh, it was it was good fun. I yeah. think I think Prema have got it absolutely nailed, spot on. Yeah, I, I was I mean, watching them last night as well. Amazing. They're be I think they're better than a lot of the F one teams. Um, they are on that side. Like, and I would say that one of the only kind of teams outside of F one that does that that media stuff. And you know, the fan base for Prema and their drivers is huge. Um, you can't take it for granted. It's really important. Mm. I think that whole team building thing is really important. Like especially yeah. if you've got like a load of lads striving for Prema, it's good that you all kind of get together and and hang out and just become friends. Like, yeah, it's important as well. You need good team spirit and for sure, you all boost each other, right? You're exactly. all young. You're all learning together. You all got the same dreams, so you kind of push each other forward. It's uh, it's important and it's it's really fun as well. So it's a bit of both, but it's it's cool. Is there people in Prema currently that you've known since you were like really young? 
that you've you've been around or raced against? Um, I mean, like I said, I didn't quite do the like Italian karting is kind of the biggest karting championship, and that's where kind of most of my teammates raced. Um, yeah. I never did that, so I mean, I I was racing at the same level as them, just in a different championship. We're kind of running parallel, let's say. Um, but I knew about them and and stuff like that, but um. I never got to race against them, unfortunately, but you know, I've known a lot of them for ages. Um, yeah. It's nice to finally race against them and, uh, and see what they're made of, it's cool. I find this whole thing crazy. You're 17, <laughs> it's absolutely, you're a second youngest guest, isn't he? Uh, Josh yeah. again, Who's young, oh yeah, you're, Joshua. Yeah, you're the second youngest. Yeah, by quite a long shot, that guy's the youngest. He's, he's young, isn't he? Yeah, Is he's he young, but he's a little legend. Is he 12? Yeah, he was 12, was 12 he yeah. might have had his birthday by now. But way beyond his years, like mentally, like to talk to. I'm not like the best person around kids because I just feel I don't know how to talk to him. But yeah. I mean, I know he's not a kid, he's, he's 12, but he's very much older in his head, I think. Mm. Very mature lad, like kind of knows what he wants to achieve. It's cool. Oh, what I cool. wanted to um, ask you was how come you don't have to live in, in Italy, like near the Prema? Well, I mean, I kind of do. Uh, oh, then he's spitting a drink off. Oh, don't <laughs> don't worry, your brand man. Dirt. I've never had before. <laughs> <laughs> the white rug. Um, yeah, so I have an apartment in Maranello. Uh, I spend more time there than I do in, in Prema. Mm. Um, Where so are Prema based? In, in, in Venice? In, near Venice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vicenza. It's kind of 30 minutes from from Venice, so mm. won't be too late when I arrive there tonight. <laughs> I've got the 6pm 6, 6 flight, so... Where from? City? From Stansted. Oh, from Stansted. Yeah, so uh, nice. it's quite it's fairly close to my house, so uh, it's on, on route, which is yeah. good. A fair play to you for coming today, man. Yeah, no, just that's the reason Appreciate I'm, I'm early. Don't mean to wake you guys up. But oh, yeah, no one knows at home, but he turned up at the crack of, no crack of dawn this oh, morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you think our energy levels are low, that's because this is the earliest podcast we've ever done. <laughs> we thought Mark Priestley was 6 early. 6 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we thought Mark Priestley was early. That was 11. This was 10. And yeah. to be fair, I didn't expect you to come at 10. When yeah. we were arranging this, I was thinking, yeah, oh, that'll be you, a You messaged me this morning, like, you still good for 10? Because like, <laughs> every time I'd be texting you saying, we've got all day i've been hoping you came back and said oh i'll come at yeah i remember you kept saying that but i i forgot to tell you that i've got the flight that's the only reason i'm here that's, so uh, hey, hey thank you for being here We're, yeah it's so happy yeah, you're here like, it's, no it's cool yeah it's nice to who do you live with at home with my in family a, yeah um but yeah across there i have my own apartment uh, in italy so there's a couple of us like there's loads of apartments and we kind of there's like four of us that live nearby in Ferrari, uh, which is good because I can't drive in Italy yet. You have to be 18, which oh, is a really? bit annoying. Wow. Um, Ubers and taxis everywhere. Well, yeah, got, exactly. I know you've got a driver. I saw from a Prema video. Who's yeah. the guy that drives you around? Yeah, so I get like a, a guy who takes me to uh, to the t to the Prema and back. you got um, personalised no, drivers. No, but one of the other drivers. Don't you always go? Oh, yeah. yeah. I was Who's going that? with Arthur quite a lot. Yeah, that's um, the one. You're always in the car with someone. Because we're always in Maranello together and then we'd always have to go to, to Prema together. But he's not racing with Prema this year. So, Where's Arthur? Um, he's with Dams, uh, a French team. So, oh, wow. yeah, that's uh, that's cool. But, yeah, we used to be, obviously, in, in Prema F3 together. So yeah. we'd go at the same time, which was quite useful. Um, saves saves a job. So, yeah, that's cool. But, that's cool. yeah, I'm 18 soon. So hopefully I'll get a car. <laughs> when is your party? It's in, exactly, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, wait. It's the 6th of... 8th of May. 8th of May, yeah. yeah it's around <sighs> no, Barcelona. That would have been weird if you got that. That would have been so weird. Yeah, yeah, I, know. <laughs> I try and do as much research again. <laughs> have you got um, brothers and sisters? Yeah, I got a younger brother and a younger sister. So my brother, actually I was watching my brother karting yesterday. No, uh, way. Oh, that's, that's awesome. So, so he's racing for the same team I was racing for um, back when I was karting. So How yeah, old is your cool. brother? He's 12 or 13, I think. He's pro I, d may he could race against that guy. Oh yeah, he might guy. race against Joshua. Wow, we didn't, even, didn't even think about that. No, uh, how old's your sister? Uh, ten. Do you, do you think she could get into? No, she uh, she does show jumping. Uh, um, still, that's 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 cool. In a well. roundabout way, it's quite similar, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, she, she my mum didn't want her in the in in racing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, your mum doesn't care about you and your brother. It's like <laughs> yeah, your sister. Two people's like, enough. What did your mum say when you originally first did it? Like, was was she really worried? So or? yeah, I think she was a bit worried, especially the first time she came to watch. I remember the first crash I had in karting, um, it was, I, I flipped the car. Oh. Um, you flipped the car? You're yeah, not the it, first it person like, to tell us that. It like, We've had another guest here that told us their first crash in karting, they flipped the car. Yeah, yeah, it's normally like that, like, cause the other ones you don't really remember. Um, True. True. But the, the first biggie is always when the cart flips. Yeah. Um, and actually, I don't know why. I think I had like, you know, when you're young, you've got a bendy bone. So oh, was, yeah, you got was, rubber bones, exactly. man. You just bounce, I was bounce fine. off it. But, um, I was like underneath the car 
and my mum was on the other side of the track, like 500 meters away. And she took her like flip flops off or something and sprinted all the way down to me. Oh, bless <laughs> like her. she was so scared. But um, I think like she was more nervous watching me race when I was younger. Even though it gets faster every year, she gets less. Um, I mean, I think she trusts me more. She just trusts you. Yeah. She's used to it. So yeah. she's all right now. But I remember at the start, she was a bit like uh, a bit worried, a bit against it. But no, mm. now she's uh, she's all for it. And especially as well, like when it when it started to get serious in F4, mm -hmm. when I started to do well. And when we decided that school wasn't the right thing, that we should stop school, mm -hmm. at the start she was a bit against that as well because uh, obviously no one wants their kid to leave school. Um, yeah. But for the good, for, for the wrong reason, I think you know we made the good decision in the end. Um, so yeah, now she's uh, she supports me all the way. Yeah, you definitely made the right decision, but you can see it from her point of view as well. Yeah, like, I mean it's a massive thing, really, isn't it? Yeah, and it's. Uh, it's also when, at that point when you'd left, you didn't have all the results like you've proven now. Exactly. So you've, you've it's proven a bit yourself of a shot now, in the dark. so it's different. Yeah, yeah. Bit Plus of pressure you ain't, there. you ain't just driving around like, fuck it, like you're driving proper cars. Yeah. This is the real deal. It's, uh, it's big, yeah. Mm. So like I said, you have to fully focus on it. You can't kind of balance school and racing, so. Do your family, friends, family and friends come to any races much? Are they there with you? So or? my dad comes to normally every race. Um, my mum came to the first F3 race last year in Bahrain. Um, my brother and sister, I think they came to a couple. Um, they came to Abu Dhabi. Um, yeah. Little holiday for them while I'm That's while I'm amazing. racing. Um, I think they'll go to Australia as well because we've never been to Australia. Mm. That would be cool. Are you guys coming to Australia? We're really mm. trying to. We're trying we've to, never yeah. been to Australia yeah. either. It'll be so cool, I think. Yeah, it's, if uh, we go, we want to go out like a week early. Yeah. Like, go and do a load of stuff in Australia. Yeah, I think we're going to... I think because it's also the jet lag's huge. Like yeah, time yeah, difference yeah. is massive. You don't want to be early. turning up on, you know quality day half asleep so i think we're gonna try and turn up kind of the <coughs> sunday before and then we're gonna stay a week after as well just to see it because it's, it's not, not often you get to go to australia is it so yeah. Yeah, yeah it's really cool i just can't believe we've never apart from barcelona we've never seen you in the paddock before yeah really, have we? i mean you guys are only really in the f1 that paddock was our right? first time in the paddock though really and we saw him it's not a bad ratio well, you were in the f1 paddock then I mean, I only, I rarely go in the F1 paddock. Uh, so why so were you in the F1 in, in Barcelona? Just because of you guys. Was it just yeah, because? Yeah. <laughs> I got, <laughs> well, that I, was a fucking shambles. <laughs> well, we've blown that, have we? <laughs> we have one chance. <laughs> I think it was my first time in the F1 paddock because like the F1 paddock is quite a uh, coveted place. You know, you can't enter with the F2 paddock pass. Yeah. So you need your own special F1 paddock pass, like you guys know, but mm. you don't get given that. So mm. like some guy from Ferrari gave it to me and it was such a cool moment. And then I met you guys. You didn't even realize <laughs> oh, that you so let me down so big time. I had no idea. That's really cool. Yeah, it was really cool actually. <laughs> um, yeah, first time in the F1 paddock was to meet you guys. So yeah, you probably the worst F1 experience time. you'll ever have in your life. <laughs> <laughs> from now on, it will probably it's be only up from that. <laughs> I feel so bad that we've blown them videos now, but I feel like we've rekindled the relationship with Ferrari. We've started fresh. Also, the look on your face at the time, I thought this kid. I thought he hates us. A couple of idiots. <laughs> I don't idiots. remember, but it was like a. I was like, oh my gosh, you guys really don't know, yeah. know much. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because like you're here now and you can see how we do it. Yeah. We, we like to do it like this. Like if we could have just had a camera guy film us in the paddock then, and we could have just stood there and chatted about the day randomly. Yeah, it without been like better. a one minute. Like yeah, but because you need to do this, this, and this. Yeah, and but for socials, how they wanted it, it wasn't actually for Ferrari. I'm pretty sure it was for Santander at the time. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, and um, they were like. We had set questions to ask you, but me and Fab have never done anything like that. Like in our head, we were like, are you excited to race the Barcelona this weekend? That's what we had to ask. Yeah, yeah. And we had all these questions, but we've just never done anything like that. Yeah. So it was so out of our comfort zone. It was I, like, before F3, you don't really do much media stuff either. So for me, it was kind of a new thing as well. I was a bit, a bit awkward on camera. So I've got a lot better at that. Um, yeah, yeah, you are. Do they, do they train you up? Yeah, so we actually we have some media training with Ferrari because um, it's important to a say the right things and b come across correctly on camera. Mm. Um, I feel like everyone's trained for TV, and like when you see the F1 interviews, they kind of, in a roundabout way, get asked the same questions all the time. Yeah, and that's give the really same annoying. answers. I mean, even at F3 level, they're only asking the same questions. Um, yeah. So I imagine for those guys getting double the amount of interviews, uh, yeah, gets a bit gets a bit boring. But um, you know like the interviewers trying to stop you on the, you know, while you're walking to the paddock and stuff that uh, I bet that can get, can get long. 
was so, going to say, I bet it, the novelty wears off after yeah, a while. Yeah, I remember but. the first time was like, wow, this is amazing. But, you know, it gets old fast. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of filming in the F2 paddock uh, next year, though, isn't there? Because they're yeah. filming the, like, almost behind the scenes. They did it this year. but Yeah, so it's been quite a new thing. But uh, I think it's Chasing the Dream, I think it's called. I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is Chasing the Dream. I get confused <laughs> with the Alfa Romeo thing. Behind the vision or beyond the... Oh, yeah, Beyond be on, the Buzzcombe. Beyond the Buzzcombe, Ruth Buzzcombe. Yeah, they they all have like similar names for the for different things, don't they? But um, yeah, that's quite cool because it's like a mini chasing the dream, and it's also I think they're like I don't know if they'll do it for me, but for most people, they kind of went to their house and kind of see all really behind the scenes, went to the mm. gym and stuff for them, which is which is quite cool. So I'm sure they'll fingers do it crossed with it's you. uh it happens because I think they'll that definitely do it with you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I hope so. It's uh it's good media. I'm just I just want to put it out there and talk about like what ifs but like if you're 17 and you win f2 like which is very very likely like you could be up there for sure yeah if you are then going like how old do you have to be to get into f1 um i think you have to be 18 so that wouldn't be an issue so you can race in f1 when you're 18 now because yeah swear, but you like, need a, a super license as well which is quite tough to get um yeah. you need to get enough points i think i've got like 30 odd um so i mean who have, if you win f2 you you straight away get a super license so that wouldn't be an issue i just feel um, like you're in this position really young compared yeah. to like most people exactly it's quite facts. Strange. facts you actually are like yeah. if you if you if you won f2 this year you couldn't still race in f1 next year because your birthday's in april yeah but i'm 18 and already in may this year oh so, so he's ready <laughs> oh, yeah, he's so ready he's, and raring to go it's only january <laughs> find him a seat <laughs> sick yeah that's yeah that, exciting. that would be i mean obviously if the stars aligned yeah um, yeah for sure it, it's not that easy but it's uh but you've done the hard work that's why you're here so young exactly the reason you're yeah, it's F2 it's cool that i'm young that i managed to because normally from f4 people go to formula regional which is like a step between f4 and f3 but uh i managed to skip formula regional which means I'm really young um, and also just do one year in F3, which also means I'm really young. So hmm. it's cool to be the youngest driver in F2. I think it's a, a good selling point. Um, so, so COVID didn't set you back? Well, I, like I was saying earlier, it set me forward almost. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm one of the only people that actually was benefited by COVID wow. without sounding heartless. Um, like Oscar was was uh, done a bit dirty by COVID, wasn't he? I think that's why he's cause technically yeah, he's, he he's only like a year younger than Lando. Right? Yeah, he said something about for a couple of years younger than Lando, but Lando's obviously been F one. Yeah, for four years is it? Or something? Yeah, but Lando got out of karting really early. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah. Really young. Really I mean, young. I think as long as you got youth on your side, man. Like the younger you get into it, the better. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, that that was the main reason for going up to F two early. Um, that I'm so young and I've got loads of time. So, that's uh, it's good to have. It's really good to have. What do you do away from all of this? Like, take the whole race and doing the whole media thing away. What do you love to do? Like, we, we sit here and we play Call of Duty or, <laughs> you know, what do you do? Well, I'll join you guys one day on that. <laughs> As you play? You no, play? I don't really play, to be honest. But, you uh, play Fortnite, don't you? No, I don't play I don't play <laughs> Xbox, to be honest. Like, I used to play loads over lockdown. I was flat out, but I kind of lost you, a lot. You have a serious job. And you <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. don't. Guys, we I don't. have a life. <laughs> I actually leave the house. <laughs> do you know what's matter? We're 10 years older than you. Really? That's you fucked. are. That's so fucked. It's I'm your not. birthday in like two <laughs> weeks. Don't don't remind them. This is making me feel <laughs> any so birthday. Old. Any birthday past eighteen is like not something to celebrate, is it? It's twenty one's like good for America. Oh yeah, twenty one's good. But then after that, it's like yeah. slow decline. What we're we doing we're for approaching thirty. Oh, I'm gonna be in Barcelona. So well, I've like my birthday is I think on the Monday. We have a Barcelona test. Um, so hopefully nicer. Meal in Barcelona. And that's meal in Barcelona. <laughs> we can recommend a few restaurants to go to <laughs> if, you, if you would like. <laughs> yeah, just uh, yeah, ping me over some restaurants. Yeah, when you're back in London, we'll go for a nice coffee. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> F1 okay for an 18th birthday party. Yeah. That'd be funny. What, what, what's, um, what's like the most exciting <clears throat> thing for you in your head about when you think about the next 10 years? of your life what's like a couple standout moments where you think i'd love to achieve that or do that or be in that position i mean in 10 years time i'll be 27 so at that stage oh my god that's horrible to hear are you 27 i just am about to be my <laughs> birthday's in like 20 odd days or something that is oh, crazy to I'm hear we've got gray hairs and everything mate i shouldn't have said that genuinely that's really bad. i've been through numerous failed relationships a lot <laughs> <laughs> Hope you know this one. <laughs> That's awful. For God's sake. I won't remind you about that anymore. But, you know, in 10 years' time, I'm going to be fairly old. Um, sorry. 
Get out! <laughs> Get out of this house! <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, by that stage, I want to be the an F1 world champion. Um, that's really the goal for everyone. Um, by 27, I'd say that's a, a good goal. Obviously, it's uh, it's not that easy, but um, mm-hmm. you know that's that's the goal. And if I didn't say that, I think you know I wouldn't be motivated enough. So, yeah, that's uh, that's it really. I mean, apart from that, I think yeah, that's really my only big goal in life. So. That's you, it. you obviously believe you have the credentials or you will have the, the skill set and the credentials to get there. What do you think se- sets you apart from the rest? Like you're allowed to big yourself up for a minute. <laughs> like, is there anything in particular you think you have skill set wise or? Because you do have an unbelievable amount of wins. Yeah, like, so, I mean, it's tough. I, I just try and drive fast. Um, it's not, you know, there's not much more to it, to be honest. Um, I think... Yeah, I think I learn quite quickly, which is an mm-hmm. important skill to have. Um, I'd say that's probably a good a good skill I have. Um, so I feel like I get up to speed quite quickly. Would you say you're like intelligent, like school wise? Yeah, exactly. So I think that's mainly the reason why um, I went to quite a, a good school. I went to a grammar school, um, which is, you know, you have to pass the test to get in and everything. I got oh, wow. good GCSEs. So um, although I left <coughs> early, I mm. still had a good ed- education. Um, I think it bodes well as well like you know although we're not doing school it's uh it teaches your brain to work in a certain way and it teaches you to learn things efficiently um i think it's put me in good stead for for racing and also just for general life yeah i think i can kind of meet people quite like talk to people quite easily and stuff like that you're very well spoken you're very easy to like just bump into yeah exactly it's it's good it's good skill to have so i think we, we were talking about it the other night kind of what we took from school and I was like, you know, I don't really use maths that much. Like I don't, I don't yeah. walk into Tesco and use like <laughs> Add up your, yeah. or, or pie or something to buy some <laughs> apples. But I think the, the most important thing about school is just like the socializing yeah. and like meeting, like just learning how to work with other people like, and not just on your own. So yeah. if I can t- if I took anything from school, it would be the socializing point yeah, for and, sure. and being able to like learn how to talk properly to people and that. So yeah. And that obviously works with you if you're working as part of a team. Exactly. I mean, we all have to work together and we all need to put our part in. Um, so, yeah, to have that kind of good backbone of education, it's uh, it's really important. Mm. You can't take it for granted. Do you speak any other languages? Well, I learned German at school. I got an A star in my German GCSE. Wow, so you must be quite good at it. But guten Tag. <laughs> yeah, that's about what I know now. I think you would say, you'd say guten Morgen. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right true. Now, right? Guten Morgen. <laughs> yeah. Ich heiße, ich heiße, heiße. Ich heiße Jake. Ah, you're pretty good then. My name is Jake. <laughs> yeah. Good effort, mate. That's awesome. It's all like that. That's totally awesome. <laughs> but um, I mean, I, that was like three years ago because I took it earlier as well. I took it in year nine. So it was. It was Couldn't even speak English in year nine. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's doing German. <laughs> but I mean, I hardly speak a word of German now because yeah. um, I don't use it so i'm trying to learn italian uh, of course it's mm. part of the part of the deal with ferrari it's kind of a, a given you have to speak italian so Do you have the app or are you just trying to learn through people well, out i learn through people i got the app but i gave up with the app pretty Same. pretty quickly <laughs> yeah it's uh I, I just yeah it's i'd rather watch netflix on my phone to be honest mm. than do the app but <laughs> um i have it we have lessons actually um so i have like once or two twice per week at um, promo in, in Italy uh, with, with Ferrari. Oh, so cool. they sort that out for us, which is nice. Um, is it just like school? Is it yeah, yeah. A load like of drivers sat in a it's, it's with a one guy to one, the which oh. is nice um, because we're all at different levels. I mean, yeah, yeah. two or three of them are actually fluent in Italian. A um, couple of them kind of speak very well. And then there's people like me who started from nothing. Um, yeah. so Robert's, it's, it's right, I imagine Robert's probably pretty good. Yeah, I, I'd say he's pretty, pretty strong. It's the thing is, like, a lot of those people where they're mother tongue isn't English they already learn a language English which makes life a bit easier because if you don't learn languages it's uh mm. it's quite tough so yeah it's not easy um but I'm just learning from that and also from being around people speaking Italian yeah. um you can kind of listen in on their conversations and pick up a thing or two which is always fun you're so, around the best because with Italian a lot of it's like the pronunciation 
Yeah. It's almost like they're singing when they when they talk. Yeah, it? it's, it's a really cool language. Yeah. Romantic language as well. So yeah. good to learn it. Yeah, you've got to know, right? I guess if there's people working on the car and they're Italian, you want to be able to speak yeah. to them. Is and there ever good, a good language for Italian barrier? sponsors? Yeah, I mean my my mechanic last year in F three didn't actually speak English. Um, oh wow. Shit. So at the start I could hardly converse How do you with tell him. him something's wrong? Are you getting up and well we what? do the translate on the phone. Well, my engineer would speak to him in oh, Italian. Okay. Oh, so, so, it's not, so it's not a complete shit. He's show. the middleman. <laughs> Someone can save the day. <laughs> exactly, but um, you know, like if I was, tra- I couldn't really talk with him. So at the start, I mean, at the end, a bit better. But uh, yeah, I kind of felt bad. Like <laughs> could hardly say like thanks to my engineer, to my mechanic. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like sponsors and stuff. It's really good mm. um, to speak Italian. Also for Ferrari, they they love it. So that's cool. Yeah, that's great. Give me five years, and I'll. Uh, or maybe be able to order a pizza. <laughs> Next time we see you around the paddock or wherever we see you, we'll, only we'll, in Italian. we'll, we'll test your Italian. Yeah, we should only yeah, speak we, in yeah, Italian. We, we could all do it and, and try it. I mean, I should know it, really. You're meant really? to be Italian. Do you yeah. have Italian? Really? Yeah, I half, like, I'm half Italian, mate. And I, Parents or? My dad, my dad's side. Um, but I just never spoke to him in Italian. My grandparents never spoke to me in Italian. You're never going to learn so, it then, are you? Yeah, and they didn't teach us at school. I had German with Miss Mackay, like no one listened in her lesson <laughs> and French as well. But I'd love to know another language. I really would. So. Yeah, it's really cool, actually. Did, did you grow up in Italy then? Or? No, no, over here. So I was born here. OK. Raised here. My dad was born here, but then my grandparents were both born okay. in Italy. When right. did you last go near, to Near Maranello, actually. Have really? you been back? Uh, well, we went like a couple of months ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did go, didn't we? Um, but apart from that, no, I haven't been in ages. We got houses over there. Really? Where are like the Like the East Coast. Yeah, it's not like the the best place to be. We wanted to be more near Nice, yeah, like around the, on the west side before it goes over into like um, Monaco and that. But it's yeah. just it's expensive, pricey, man. Yeah, pricey. I need to get a few more views on the on the on the <laughs> podcast first before I think about getting a place out there. Yeah, no, it's but. really cool though. Um, the, the weather's lovely in mm. in uh, in summer. We've been there on holiday the last two years in a row. So yeah. it's like every time I go there on holiday, it's like coming home because. You know, I'm always flying to Bologna Airport, and that's yeah. where we went on holiday. So not the, not the greatest airport, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. Isn't We've it? been stuck there before, and there's oh, like yeah. no food. Like, yeah, you can't get any food. We saw Especially Yuki Sonoda there. In, really? Yeah. Oh yeah, because AlphaTauri is pretty close, isn't it? it, it that's be. right. We did, didn't we? We just walked in, and he was just stood there looking around for the check-in with his, with his suitcase, own. which was like this. A, I swear, he had a massive bag on his back, like a he massive had a, bag. He had one of those suitcases with the four wheels, so you can walk it. But he was like, he was just looking around up <laughs> at all the signs, and he was just like, oh my god. That is Yuki. Yeah. It actually surprised me how small a lot of the F1 drivers are. Um, That's what I mean. It surprised small. me. Yeah. So big. Yeah, because yeah, I'm quite big. It's not the best. Um, I, I, str- I struggle to fit in the car a little bit. What do you weigh? How much do you weigh? Um, with them, with my helmet and everything, like 73 kilos. Yeah. Like 68. Is that how they normal. weigh? It? If if you see like an F1 driver's weight, would it always be with their It'll full be with gear? With the on? kit, yeah, normally. Right, right. So you're 73 with kit. So that's heavy, isn't yeah. it? Isn't it? Like, Fernando Alonso is, like, 68. Yeah. But imagine, he's probably, like, this much shorter than me. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's a lot of weight loss. But Alex uh, Albon was, um, like, 78 yeah. or 74. He's similar George is around the same. Yeah. yeah. So I think as long as you're under, kind of, 77 with kit, then you're all right. But then you start to lose time because the, the, the rule is 80 kilos, driver plus seat, and the seat's about two kilos. So wow. you've got, like, 77, 78 kilos to play with. And they'll put ballast um, in if you're underweight, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. If you're if you're like really really light, then yeah, they'll mm. they'll put you to the same weight. Um, but I think above kind of seventy six, it becomes a, dis- a disadvantage. Yeah, a bit um, tricky. So I need to be a bit careful. But at the moment, I'm all right. Go easy on the on the Big Macs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Christmas, Christmas, only one uh, only one roast dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but no excuses now though, because we're going to put you through the sim. Oh God! And it doesn't matter how what your weight is or yeah, what exactly. equipment you got on my height or anything. Are you can any we, good on? Can we see the board like? on the camera? The what? Eh? The board. You can see the board. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's the board there. So so as long far, as I'm in the top three, I'll be happy. Because if I finish behind you boys, then <laughs> we finish behind effort. us, mate. <laughs> we were saying this, mate. If you if you did for any reason, and to be honest. Like we have to admit, we did it on automatic with full traction. You've got. Am I allowed that or not? You've got. You've got. <laughs> you've got half traction. Great. Medium traction, and you've got um, manual. Full, full manual gears. Easy. So I mean, realistically, the fact that I'm only 1.7 seconds behind Felipe Dragovic is an absolute piss take. I never would have got close if it was a manual. So there is a chance. Yeah, the track's Austria. You're gonna have three laps. We'll do it. And then we'll come sit back down, and then we'll announce your time to you. We'll talk about it. Yeah. We'll, we'll do a debrief. 
but yeah. <laughs> my right. validation. I'm <laughs> nervous for this. Let's go and get Ollie's lap. Let's do it. Just had to uh, explain to Ollie that the, the pedals aren't fitted properly. <laughs> Yeah. And there we go, he's done his lap. A bit sweaty now. <laughs> How was that? Yeah, it was cool. I haven't done a lot of laps on the F1 game. Um, I heard that the traction control off is like really hard to drive, so I'm glad you gave me a little bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's fun. It's uh, it's cool. We had two we had two practice laps, and then you had three time laps. All right, so you had a few goes around the track, set the sim up. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. From watching your practice laps, they look pretty solid. Like compared to the other guys, I, I, some people struggled here and there a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I do do a lot of sim work. Like uh, I drive on my sim at home. I don't have that game, but you know, they're all fairly similar. I have the exact same steering wheel as that, so maybe a little bit of an, of an advantage. But <laughs> you were saying see, maybe I'm half a second off. So. You were saying the chair wasn't really set up too well. Yeah, it's like a, it's like an armchair. <laughs> the steering wheel is like <laughs> so far away, isn't it? Should we crack on and see let's what crack you got? On. All right, let's let's move over to the board, guys. How are you feeling about it? I, uh, as long as I'm faster than you two boys, <laughs> I'm not I, too bothered. I must admit, me and Jake had automatic and full traction, so yeah. it's a bit unfair. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Ollie Behrman, you did the pit stop fastest lap in a one minute. Five. That's a good start. Point nine five three. Oh. To you, my friend. Oh. And that is so close. That's so close. Mate, you're second. Oh. But you beat Dragovic. <laughs> Damn it. That's Drag really close. <laughs> he won it first. That's but so mate, that's, that's unreal. That's cool, though. <laughs> I can't believe how close that is. Wow. Round of applause Let for Ollie Bem. Woo! Yeah. That's, that's mega close. Ollie, thank you very much for Ollie joining Bowman. us on the Pit Stop podcast. It's, it's been, been a pleasure. pleasure. Yeah, yeah thank thanks you. For, this is your first pod. Hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's really cool. A um, bit different to normal, but I'm, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, was, I was really happy with it. We're going to see you around all the races, mate, this year. Yeah, exactly. Which Maybe we can cool. redo that video in a bit, <laughs> in a bit better fashion. <laughs> well, we'll definitely redo another pod like at the end of the year, probably. Yeah, and, for sure. And just see how you got on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, best of luck for the year. F2 is going to be amazing, man. We'll be following. Can't wait to watch it. Hope you have a great weekend. Safe flight, safe flight tonight. And yeah. um, we'll see you around. Yeah, see you right. around. Cheers, Cheers bring it in. Thank you so Boom. much. It's been quality. That was a good Thank connection. you so much. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Legend. <sighs> nice. Oh, that was good.